Hi, my name is Eliza Steinbach, and I identify as a non-binary transgender person who is also awesome. awesome. Who was the first person you came out to, and how did it go? The first yeah. person I didn't really mean to come out to was my mother. She was reading a letter I had uh, addressed to my brother, who was away, um, actually doing uh, like a military training. Um, so she got the letter, uh, intercepted it. And um, she was very interested and in kind of understanding what I meant when I said uh, a girl liked me and whether it meant that I also liked other girls. Um, but of course there was some concern because I was only 13 at the time and uh, she wasn't entirely sure what this would all mean for me, uh, her child. So that was the first person that you came out to as queer. How about coming out as non-binary? Yeah, that I feel I continue to do uh, all the time. <laughs> uh, but maybe um, it felt a little bit official when um, I was starting to use it as my signature, um, also as a, as a researcher. Um, so it was signaled mo mostly by um, a change in pronoun. Um, and I did some, let's say, trying out of um, putting this in my bio note professionally. Um, in my personal life, it was um, already a known thing to, to those around me. Um, so I don't really have a, a very good story about that. But um, at least using it in the public realm for me felt like much more of a, a kind of professional coming out than actually a gendered coming out. Yeah, I get that. And how were the reactions to that official coming out? Um, I did have someone tell me Mazel Tov, <laughs> uh, which is a, a nice phrase um, in Yiddish. It means congratulations. And uh, I tend to also, although I'm not Jewish, uh, uh, use that with other people because I think uh, it can be seen as a blessing. Um, also, that maybe something for yourself is a little more resolved uh, or you have found the, the vocabulary or the language um, that's adequate to your experience, at least for, for the time being. Um, yeah, so overall, it was very positive. Um, a, lot of, a lot of questions as well um, that I, I needed some time to also figure out how, how to answer, particularly about, well, what does this mean? Where, does, where will this lead? Um, I think when you come out as a, a queer person, most people think, oh, okay, well then, you know, you're open to queer relationships and love and nowadays maybe even marriage. There's no reason you couldn't have a family. Um, but with transitioning, you have a narrative that um, is really also opened up. And people want to know what sort of things are you going to do? Will you um, go along with the dominant script? Um, and so my answer was, I don't know. <laughs> and that's going to have to be good enough for now. I think that's a really important message to hear that it's okay if you don't know and you have the time to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And it can go um, in different directions. So if, if you don't know, you can also, you know, do some wandering to the right and come back and do some wandering to the left. And that's also okay. But, um, um, very often it's not about a moment that is a moment of deciding, but it's more of a, <laughs> my friend um, Sam Fader, who's um, produced and directed the documentary Disclosure, he explained it in an interview that it's a, a drip, drip, drip effect. And at some point your bucket is full and you go, oh, <laughs> that's what that was about. Um, so it's a slow growing um, knowledge. How did coming out make you feel? Uh, well, there's always a moment of trepidation. Uh, oh, okay. What, what now with this new framework um, will change? But there's also that uh, excitement. Ooh, uh, <laughs> what, what possibly could change in my relationships? Um, so there's, there's many more opportunities uh, when, when you have vocabulary for connecting with people. Um, joining different communities or maybe communities you are a part of that now you have a greater understanding uh, what was your connection to or association with why did you feel at home there that was especially for me 
um, because I had been working within trans communities professionally, but also in my private life. I'd had relationships, uh, intimate and also friendships with trans people. Um, and so for me, that realization that I'm also on the trans spectrum and that I'm trans enough uh, was, it was really a beautiful kind of coming home. What has been the most supportive coming out experience for you? I think when I was interviewed in Mara, or maybe it was the humans of the humanities um, at, at Leiden University that I got, oh, I'm gonna get a little emotional, but um, I got emails from colleagues. Um, also in the similar kind of, you know, mazel tov, um, uh, vibe and people had said, you know, this is great that I know this about you now and I know how to address you uh, correctly. And I think for me, that's um, a sign that it's worth, always it's worth uh, taking the risk. What has been the hardest thing about coming out? Um, the hardest thing about, I think when you, when you kind of re-describe your identity, um, is that um, people who you might be intimate with uh, oftentimes are like, hey, you know, why didn't you feel comfortable uh, telling me this before? And of course, identity is made in relation to others. Um, but there's no real answer to that question. It's not, it's not necessarily about uh, the other person. Um, and I would say like probably the same level of, of difficulty um, is, is correcting people on their wrong assumptions um, and that emotional labor. Um, and that also goes when people assume uh, that, you're, that you're straight or that you're not. Uh, so it can be a misrecognition. Um, but for me, I, I think correcting people on uh, correct, like my pronouns, they, them, um, or de hun in Dutch, um, that's never been easy. Do you think it will get easier? I hope language use continues to evolve and become more widespread. It's certainly gone mainstream and um, it allows our community to also, uh, people who use these pronouns or who identify as non-binary, um, I think it'll give them also a sense of safety and I think our numbers in terms of visibility will grow. Uh, so I certainly hope that that will, uh, <laughs> that, that the, the conditions will improve so we can just live our lives. When was the last time you came out to someone? I just started teaching five new courses and I have a lot of students that uh, <laughs> I'm kind of saying hello, I'm your new uh, teacher too. And so, yeah, September yeah, 8th, 9th, uh, I did it all over again for another another whole semester. So uh, in that way, especially when you have pronouns that are different um, than he, she, um, or you have people who just know that there's these two genders and you're like, actually, there might be more. Um, that's always, I think, an educational moment. So I'm glad that I can do this in university. And I know how much it means to my students as well to actually have a, a, a person that, that might be a little bit like them. So I don't mind. Do you have any advice for LGBTQI plus people who are struggling with coming out? The struggle is real. Uh, there's no timeline that's um, ideal. Um, you have to really decide for yourself uh, to whom are you able to uh, speak your truth? And um, at what time do you want to speak your truth to other people? Um, that circle eventually, hopefully, will get wider and you will um, come to trust that the risk is worth taking. Want to hear more coming out stories? Please visit lightofpride.nl.